This lesson deals with finding the Fourier series of a sawtooth waveform. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 13, starting on page 4. Given this sawtooth versus frequency, could you find the Fourier series of f of t? Well, in order to do that, we need to write an expression for f of t over a period. Our period here is from 0 to t0. Just a straight line passing through the origins, the slope, rise over run, times t would be our equation. The rise is a, and the run is t0 minus 0. So here's our slope of a over t0 times t. When t is equal to 0, f of t is 0. And when t is equal to t0, we just have a straight line. a0 from our last video is 1 over the period, integral over a period. Our period now will be from 0 to t0. 1 over t0, integral of our function, a over t0 times t dt. a and t0 are not a function of time, so you just bring that out in front. So I have a over t0 squared, and then the integral from 0 to t0 of t dt. The integral of t dt is, is 1 half t squared upper limit minus the lower limit, t0 squared minus 0 squared. The t0 squares cancel, and I'm just left with a over 2. The term a sub n is equal to 2 over t0 integral over a period of f of t times the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t dt. Our function is a over t0 times t. The a and the t0 are not a function of time. Pull those out in front, and then I have 2a over t0 squared integral over a period of t times the cosine of 2 pi n f naught t dt. Recall from calculus, the integral of x cosine of ax dx is 1 over a squared cosine of ax plus x over a sine of ax. In our case, x is equal to t, and a is equal to 2 pi n f naught. So then a sub n is equal to 2a over t0 squared. Then we have the cosine of ax divided by a squared plus x divided by a times the sine of ax. And we're going to evaluate that from the upper limit minus the lower limit. Plugging in t equals t0, then I have a t0 here, a t0 here, and a t0 here. Let me also write f0 as 1 over t0. We'll get some cancellation. And then the minus the lower limit, we're going to put in 0 for t. So then I have the cosine of 0, 0 times the sine of 0, divided by these two terms. Now the t0s cancel, and I get the cosine of 2 pi n. So when n is equal to 1, that's the cosine of 2 pi, which is 360 degrees, and that's just equal to 1. For 720, the same thing. For the sine, and the two t0s cancel, the sine or n is equal to 1 would be the sine of 360 degrees, which is equal to 0, and the same for n equals 2, and so on. Cosine of 0 is just equal to 1, so that's this term right over here, and of course 0 times anything is 0. But this term is the same as this term, and so the difference is equal to 0. a sub n is equal to 0 for all n. B sub n is equal to 2 over t0, integral over a period, of our function f of t now times the sine of 2 pi n f naught t, dt. Pull out the a over t0 in front. So I'm left with the integral of t times the sine of 2 pi n f naught t. Recall from calculus that the integral of x sine of ax dx is 1 over a squared sine of ax minus x over a cosine ax. Again, in our case, x is equal to t, and a is equal to 2 pi n f naught. So then v sub n is equal to 2a over t0 squared. And then here's the term sine of ax divided by a squared minus x divided by a times the cosine of ax. That we did the upper limit minus the lower limit. Plug in for t, t0, t0, and t0. And again, write f0 is 1 over t0. And we're going to get some term cancellations. Evaluating t is equal to 0, we're going to get the sine of 0. And we get 0 times the cosine of 0. Get some terms to cancel and then we can evaluate the results. v sub n is equal to 2a over t0 squared. The sine of 2 pi n, say n equals 1, would be the sine of 360 degrees, which is equal to 0. And then for n equals 2, that would be 720, and so on. So that's going to be equal to 0. Then we have t0 times the cosine of 2 pi n. When n is equal to 1, that's the cosine of 2 pi, which is 360. So that's going to be equal to 1. So we have t0, and then divided by 2 pi n, and the t0 comes up in the numerator, so I get a t0 squared. The sine of 0 is 0, and then 0 times anything is 0. And so combining our terms, we have 2a over t0 squared, and then times a minus t0 squared over 2 pi n. The t0 squares cancel. The 2s cancel. And I'm left with a over n times pi for all n. Let's combine our results then. So f of t is equal to a0, which was a over 2, plus the summation from n equals 1 to infinity, of a sub n, which is equal to 0, and then just b sub n times the sine of 2 pi n f naught t. Let's use p-splice to plot the first five terms in the summation of the sawtooth waveform that we just have above. If our value of a is equal to 10 and f naught is equal to 500 hertz, 
Let's repeat this for doing the first 10 terms. Let's see the difference between 5 and 10 terms in the summation. Evaluating the formula above, I have a, which is equal to 10, divided by 2, summation from n equals 1 to infinity, of minus 10 over n pi, times the sine of 2 pi n f naught times t, and f naught is equal to 500. What's shown below here is the calculations for n is equal to 1 to 10. I have 5 here, and then this first term turns out to be a minus 3.1831 times the sine of 2 pi 500 t. The next term for n equals 2, the constant is equal to 1.5915 times the sine of 2 pi times 1 kilohertz times t, and then 1.5 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 2.5, and, and so on, and then up to 5 kilohertz. This does continue on, but I want to show you that with 5 terms or 10 terms that we're pretty close to the final waveform. One way to plot f of t is to turn into a voltage. So we have the summation of 10 voltages plus a constant, so that'd be 11 voltages. So I put together a series combination of voltage sources with nodes 1 through 11. Node 1 is called DC term or average term, and that was equal to 5 volts. The next voltage I'll call V1, and that was my sine of 500 hertz with an amplitude of minus 3.1831. Average value is 0, so I'll put 0 first. And this is the peak value and then the frequency. Likewise for the 1 kilohertz, 1 and a half kilohertz, all the way through 5 kilohertz. A splice doesn't like floating voltage source. There needs to be a resistive path back to ground. Put a resistor there of 1K. The value doesn't make any difference because these are fixed voltages. My value of F0 is 500 hertz. So the reciprocal of that is 2 milliseconds. Well, let's multiply that by 5 and take a look at 5 cycles. So 10 milliseconds would be my final time. I'll divide that by 200 and get 50 microseconds for the print step. Start plotting at 0, and then I'll make the ceiling step the same as the print step. By looking at node voltage 6, we can see the first five terms that were summed together. Here you can start to see our triangle wave starting to form. And looking at node voltage 11, we can see the remaining terms. Here is the DC level plus the 10 terms in my summation. And again, it's closer and closer to a triangle wave. So we don't need to have n go to infinity, but just 10, and we're getting pretty close to what the final wave shape looks like. Now just some final terminology. In this last example, F0 was equal to 500 hertz. We call that our fundamental frequency. The other frequencies are multiples of the fundamental frequency. Twice F0, three times F0, are called the second harmonic and the third harmonic, and so on. And this is finding a Fourier series for a sawtooth waveform.